Hello and welcome back to Tech Talk. I'm Graham Hughes. Today we're going to be talking about passing the CompTIA A Plus Core 2 exam. Now this is sort of a part two video. I did a video a few months ago on passing the Core 1 exam. That covered most of the strategies that I used to pass that exam the first time. This is going to be a shorter video that just looks at a few specific things you need to think about and prepare for that are unique to the Core 2 exam. So if you haven't seen the earlier video, go back and check it out. Uh, and then this one is going to add to it just for those Core 2 particulars. So there's a couple of things that you do need to know about this exam. The first is that CompTIA has done a fantastic job on compartmentalizing these two exams. And what I mean by that is you don't have to stress about remembering everything you learned for the Core 1 exam and carrying it with you into the Core 2 exam. The two exams really do cover totally separate fields of knowledge. So you don't have to stress about, you know, gee, do I have to remember all the Core 1 info to, to pass Core 2? You don't. There is one exception to that, though, and that is all the ports and protocols that you learned for the Core 1 exam you need to retain when you're doing the Core 2 exam. Uh, there are questions on Core 2 that relate to the ports and protocols, and if you've lost that information, you're going to have a challenging time with that. So as you're preparing for the Core 2 exam, just make sure that you hold on to that information regarding ports and protocols, and that you're continuing to practice it so that you remember it. The other critical thing is in Core 2, because you're looking now more at operating systems and software, there is quite a bit of work done on the command line interface. So that is keying commands directly into PowerShell or Linux Bash. And there's quite a few commands that you're going to be given. Now, you do have to memorize those commands. You should know what they are, especially the ones that relate to group policy objects and relate to networking and network troubleshooting, things like IP config. Those ones, I mean, you want to remember all of them, but those ones in particular you want to know. And it's not enough just to memorize what they do, you should be practicing how they work. Uh, and I'll tell you why. I had a performance-based question that was based largely on group policy objects, where I had to go into the command line, enter the command to determine what the group policy objects were, what the net network setup was, and then answer a whole bunch of questions. Now, the network setup, I got no problem, but the group policy object, when I put in GP result to see them, it wouldn't work. I thought, man, why won't this work? And when I left the exam after I was done, I realized I had forgotten the switch to show it on screen because it's not enough to put in GP result. There's a switch you have to add to see it on screen. So the way that performance-based question was set up, it simply didn't give you help. There wasn't anything you could do. It just didn't show up. So I kind of bombed on that question. Now, I did okay on the exam overall. I think I ended up at 82%, so I didn't necessarily need to do great. But I would have done better on the exam had I known that. So make sure you practice those command line interface commands so that you know how to use them and that they do work. And that brings up kind of a, another issue. I did all my training for Core 2 the same way I did Core 1. I used Mike Myers' course and his practice exams and Jason Dion's practice exams. And I did well on the exam. I got, like I say, 82% or whatever it was. Uh, but there were a few things that were missing, and group policy objects in general, Mike Myers didn't go into in any great depth. You'll do better if you do a little bit of extra research. Maybe go to Professor Messer's website and learn a little bit more about group policy objects. You don't have to know, you know, go into Active Directory and figure out how to apply them. You just need to know what they are, what they do, how they're used, and how to find out what they look like accessing them through a command on the command line. Uh, if you know that, that's all you need to know. I found Mike's information was a little light on that, so just make sure you really understand group policy objects. Another thing that you really will want to know, because it shows up quite a bit on the exam, is about protected data, things that are subject to privacy, things like health information, credit card numbers, etc. You want to know what the appropriate protocols are, regulations, etc. Make sure you have the information from Mike down on that, because it does show up on the exam. Uh, documentation and communication was big when there's, you know, a, a security breach or virus or whatever. How do you document what you did? You know, how do you communicate with uh, customers? Again, I would check out Professor Messer as well as Mike Myers because there is quite a lot of information there. It's not obvious. That was the one area of the exam probably I was the weakest on because they're looking for very specific answers and some of them aren't obvious at all. And you really need to know what the view is of CompTIA on how to do these things. So it's important that you really have that information down. Uh, so that's another area where you might want to get 
information from a second source just to, to flesh it out. Now all these things, the, the command line stuff, the uh, group policy objects, everything that I've mentioned, that was what was on my exam. Keep in mind that it, they don't give the same exam to everybody. There's numerous versions of this exam. So yours might not be weighted the same as mine. All I can tell you is that based on my experience, these are things that do show up and that you may need a little bit of extra information besides just what Mike gives you in the Mike Myers training if that's the training that you're taking. So having a little bit of extra information in those areas probably can't hurt. Now there was just one other thing that I wanted to add. When I did my original video, in that video I talked about a Google Sheet I had set up that was a memorization tool for things you needed to memorize for Core 1, things like ports and protocols. Now I'm happy to say that I've done a second memorization tool on Google Sheets for Core 2. And it's got all the stuff that really you should probably have memorized for the Core 2 exam. And I thought in this video what I'd do is I'd just go through and show you how it works. Um, because I did have some questions on the original, so maybe this will help a few people that get a little bit stuck. So looking at my screen here, the first thing you need to know is that these Google Sheets won't work if you try to use them on my Google Drive just the way they are. The first thing you have to do is save it to your own Google Drive, and then you can fool with them to the extent that you want, or any other service that accepts Google Sheets. Uh, so that's the first thing. Save it first to your own service. The second thing is that there's three columns here that are hidden that show the answers. And you can see them by these little arrows. So column B, column F, and column J are hidden. And the answers are actually there. So the way I recommend that you use this tool is that every day when you're doing your training, you're, you're taking your courses, I would go in and I would fill out all the stuff that you know off the top of your head how to fill it out. And as you can see, what happens when you fill in the correct answers, um, this thing where it says no will turn to yes if you get it right. If it doesn't turn to yes, it'll stay as no. Um, so that's how you know you got the answer right. So fill in all the ones you know. The ones you can research quickly and figure out, fill in. And then once that is done, just open up the hidden columns to see what the answers are. Now it is a protected sheet. So often when you go to open it, you'll get a warning that says, you know, hey, this is a protected sheet. You click the little box that says, let me make changes for five minutes because that'll let you modify the sheet for five minutes. It didn't come up this time because I've been working with it, but typically you just get a box you can click it for five minutes of, of horsing with it. So what I would do is if you open these up, you can see the answers. You'll have your answers that you've already put in. I would go ahead and type in the answers you didn't know. So this is 16sign.254.x.x and you can see when you hit tab, this changes to yes, that's the right answer. And you might think it's silly, but the act of just typing in the answers will help to reinforce it. I found by going through that process, by the end of a week or so, I could fill out 90% of this sheet just off the top of my head. And you don't have to sit here for hours and hours doing it over and over. I find just once a day, go through it, and your brain will absorb what you need to know until you know a week, two weeks later, you'll pretty much know the whole sheet. So that's how this memorization tool works. When you're done, all you have to do is highlight the column that has your answers in it, hit delete on your keyboard that will hold or clear out the whole column. So there's three columns of answers that you can clear. And then you simply go ahead, you right click on the columns that have the answers and go hide. So you hide column B, you hide column F, you hide column J, and now you're ready to work with your, your spreadsheet again. So I hope you find that helpful. Uh, if you do, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Leave some comments down in the uh, comment section below or on my website. If you've got suggestions to make the tool better or if there's a video you'd like to see in the future, I'd be more than happy to hear from you. Again, I'm Graham Hughes. Uh, my website is techtalk.net and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next video.